You're watching Influence Me Wednesday with Morale All Things Hair. Hello, my name is Morello Kane, and it's Morale All Things Hair Doc Media, the hair debate. And I am here with Dr. Nikki Hill of Soka Center. Dr. Hill, how are you today? Lovely, how are you doing? I am doing great, Dr. Hill. And for our viewers that may not know of you, can you introduce yourself, please? Absolutely. So my name is Dr. Nikki Hill. I'm a board-certified dermatologist. I'm a medical hair loss expert, owner and founder of Skin of Culture and Hair Center, which is a full cosmetic and medical dermatology practice where we focus on hair loss disorders and just making you look beautiful, keeping your personal brand ready for life's everyday events. In that she does. <laughs> so, Dr. Hill, our topic of today is a great one. Yes. Okay, is cancer won't defeat me. Yes. And so, I would say that this topic would be for the individual that has just recently been diagnosed with cancer and possibly have not started um, radiation yet. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Hill, you know, um, can you educate us, please, on is it the cancer per se or is it the radiation that creates hair loss? Absolutely. So it can be a multitude of, of both. A lot of times, um, if cancers can be diagnosed late, um, cancer we have to understand is when the cells start to divide quickly. Usually cells will divide and then they have a stop point. There's an automatic feedback that tells the cells to stop making more cells and to die off. But when we lose that checkpoint or certain cells lose that checkpoint, they keep dividing and multiplying to the point where they start picking up mutations and they wow. stop acting like regular cells and they stop acting like their regular organ cells. So they start to invade other areas. Okay. So when that happens, they require a lot of nutrition, they require a lot of energy, and that's where we start to, potentially individuals may notice that um, dietary changes may, may be affected, their GI may be affected, like there's, there's intestines and, and, and a digestive system, and they can potentially start to have changes in their skin or hair or nails from that. And the other side of that, if someone's been diagnosed with any type of cancers, and depending on the type of treatments, there are some medications, chemotherapy treatments, and radiation treatments that can potentially sometimes as a byproduct of the medicine, because it yes. targets and tackles those fast dividing cells, well, the cells in your intestine and digestive system, the cells in your fingernails, and also the cells in your hair mm -hmm. divide relatively quick. Yes. And so that's why sometimes those cells can be involved potentially, and we can have signs of either weight loss or nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and or possibly hair loss and shedding and nail shedding and stop growing as well. Okay, so with lack of the nutrition from the disease aspect of it, and then two, from the radiation, how it goes in and attack, and it does not know good cells from bad cells, and so all of it is affected. Radiation is um, a little bit different from the chemotherapy and the medications. Okay. Radiation treatment, depending on the areas that they're radiating, a lot of times if there's a, a if we're affecting um, or trying to affect brain cancer cells or tumors, um, then of course radiation will be more applied towards the scalp. And okay. radiation can cause a little bit of destruction in the area or potential inflammation or potential scarring in the area. So that can lead to some hair changes. Um, a lot of times if radiation is in other parts of the body, even close to the scalp, there can be a little bit of reaction from the radiation. Um, while during my training at MDM Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, our dermatology department was really key in really making sure we were treating post-radiation -radi um, treatments or burns or irritation. Um, sometimes we'd also have to treat um, skin conditions and hair conditions that could be a result of chemotherapy. So it is something that can be a result, but I always tell everyone you want to stay strong, you want to understand how it's happening, understand the treatments that you're being um, given and, and what some of the side effects are. Because sometimes we can potentially combat some of those side effects if possible. Sometimes we can, but we always have to understand what the greater good is and what Absolutely. the benefits of those treatments are. That is the truth. And so with working with your oncologist, mm -hmm. definitely you should have a dermatologist right at hand you know, working with you and defeating this because again, that's the topic. That's what we want, yeah, you know, is to defeat this thing. And so now, okay, you've gone through, mm -hmm. okay, and when I tell you the hair, the, the hair growth. So say that they've lost mm -hmm. the hair and now it's the regrowth of the hair. Okay. So now what changes can they expect to go through with that? There is a spectrum. So because okay. a lot of things may be immune specific or immune 
regulated, um, especially with a lot of medications that they're trying now, instead of being a global, more um, uh, destructive, they're trying mm -hmm. to have them more focused and pinpoint the individual receptors on cells. Okay. So they're trying to make um, and target um, chemotherapy to be more immune therapy as opposed to global therapy. Um, but with individuals that undergo certain types of, of treatments, if the hair, the hair can will go through different stages. Right. Some individuals, if the hair regrows, it regrows finer, mm -hmm. or it can regrow coarser. Typically, a different texture, a okay. different curl pattern can occur in patients. Um, different colors, even at times. Wow! So we, we have patients that come in that have undergone or are survivors, and you know, every day trucking and, and rocking and rolling yes. and past. Um, the five-year mark which if you're a survivor you know how awesome that is yes. and so sometimes the hair does regrow and shift and change sometimes it stays in that different state mm -hmm. sometimes the hair may grow back finer especially okay. if there were areas where there may have been a little bit of collagen buildup or a little bit of scarring that occurred so we always want to have a very realistic um, outlook of what's going on with the mm -hmm. hair but there are some things that we could potentially do to try to stimulate a little bit of growth and just working with team you mentioned the team your oncologist your dermatologist yes. your stylist your barber you want to really make sure you have a team approach so that way we really can uh, optimize the health of the scalp so we yes. can optimize healthy hair growth absolutely dr hill mm -hmm. um again she has been amazing as always we thank <laughs> you so much for the input the education absolutely. and when it comes to cancer because we are definitely about defeating this and so yes. dr hill thank you so much for your information again it's morello k and morello mm -hmm. all things hair dot media the hair debate where we come to debate debunk and discover all things hair